What's good? What's good? I'm back. Yours truly, one and only Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast, aka Triple P, aka the Common Sense Podcast, your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and much, much more. Today, I'm going to react to a video that um, might get me canceled because it's a Russell Brand um, video talking about Bill Gates and him trying to uh, basically go after this monopoly on this lab grown food and really it's it's not about the lab grown it's not about the him going after the monopoly that um i'm so much worried about as the lab grown food but before we get into that and hopefully we don't get canceled because russell brand is definitely they're trying to cancel russell brand across the board but you know still gotta react man we still you know, can't conform, um, you know, can't be silenced, got to still give our views, opinions, you know, based off of the facts and the things that we hear in society. But before we get into that, I want to give you a word from Dizzle, I mean, not Dizzle brand, but uh, promo palace.biz. So I'll pull up the ad right here. Give me a second. I actually should have already had this loaded in and prepared. I'm slipping this morning, but here we go. A message from promopalace.biz. Marketing and promotion? Then look no further than Promo Palace LLC, your one-stop shop for all music promotion services. Services include Spotify playlist pitching, YouTube video promotion, record pool promotion, blog placements, radio airplay promotion, SoundCloud promotion, and much more. With over 2,000 customers and over 10 years of experience in online promotion, Promo Palace LLC is a company you can trust. For more info, please go to promopalace.biz. See you there. That's right. You heard the beautiful lady from the online market of promotions. Please go to promopalace.biz. We're not one of those companies that are going to tell you, you know, it's all about streaming and Spotify and things of that nature. I'm definitely going to give you the right advice, the best advice, and let you know that um, numero uno as a musician, you should be focusing on YouTube. And YouTube, once you get your YouTube monetized and build up to a certain point, you're able to leverage all your other platforms you know, with the YouTube and Spotify. That's the thing. There's no commenting. There's no engagement on Spotify. So anybody that's just like, yo, buy Spotify, buy Spotify. They're not a real music promoter. And I would actually do TikTok marketing before Spotify. I would recommend Facebook marketing for, before Spotify. I will recommend Instagram marketing before Spotify. I would recommend a lot of things before Spotify because Spotify doesn't allow you to engage on the actual um, content, you know, because all they need to do is implement comments and allow people to reply to comments. But the fact they're not doing that should let you tell you a lot about Spotify. That they don't really want you to come up on their platform. All right, so let's get into it. Hopefully we don't get canceled because Russell Brand is definitely um, trying to get canceled across the board. They're basically shutting him down on all his platforms and hopefully they don't um flag people that still react to the content but here we go lovely coatings for fruits is this in order to reverse climate change and feed the world or is it so that the entire process of food from growing it to selling it can be patented and controlled by bill gates hello there you 6.5 million awakening wonders thanks for joining me on this voyage to truth and freedom. If we remain alert, strong, and focused, we can discern truth from fiction. We can analyze crazy stories from across the globe, including this one. Bill Gates appears to be attempting to patent new types of food that are grown in labs and centrally controlled. Remember, the key issue that we discuss here is global corporatism. Are there a network of agencies and interests that are able to transcend 
national democracy and all forms of democracy, actually, and impose everything on you from censorship to the ability to control food sources. Certainly, our friend Vandana Shiva believes this is precisely the case. Turn on the notification bell and subscribe to our channel and let us know in the comments what you think Bill Gates his role in the world is. Is it that he's a philanthropist who just wants to feed people or does he have other motives and what are they? Let us know right now. Let's have a look at how our friends at the mainstream media are describing this phenomena of lab-grown fruit. You've heard of lab-grown meat? Yes, I have heard of it. I'm disgusted by it. Instead of harmonising with nature, instead of looking at ways to decentralise power, instead of empowering farmers to do their jobs properly, and I say this as a vegan who doesn't even eat meat, instead of having sensible farms with sensible farmers who have authority in their own lives, why not create some disgusting, appalling, visually anomalous, and morally reprehensible new food source? Yeah, we'll do the second. But what about lab-grown fruit? New Zealand scientists at Plant and Food Research are looking at how to produce fruit without a tree, vine, or bush. <laughs> Why are we doing this? Why are we going to all this trouble to subvert and deny nature? Why not just find new ways of taking care of the planet together, which could be done sensibly by decentralising, by placing an imaginary grid across the world and empowering people within each territory to run their own lives. Thing is, there's less profit in that. Why is there never any research done on how to break up food monopolies? Now we're within the lab, people are experimenting on stopping Bill Gates from being so bloody greedy. Stop it, Bill. Stop it. No, no, I won't. Bill, stop it. No, I want to control everything. Bill, you don't need any more farms. Just one more farm. It may not look like it now. Because what it does look like is bogies, boogers, snot. Look at what it does look like is nasal discharge. <laughs> Sir, would you care to indulge? No, you're all right. I'll stick with the Ferrero Rochers. Excellent. But this petri dish has the makings of blueberries. We could have a kind of a whole new growing system for, for fresh plant foods. They're preparing for dystopia. Look at the ways you can see the preparation for dystopia take place. Militarisation of the police force, growing food in laboratories, having robot dogs patrolling the police and, and drones patrolling the skies, censorship laws everywhere, the ability for organisations like the WHO to bypass national democracy, centralised currencies where you can switch off the financial power of individuals at will. All of these stories, I swear we're going to look back at this and say, look, it was so obvious what was happening. We just watched it like, hey, that's pretty funny. It's a petri dish full of boogers. That petri dish of boogers means that you're going to spend the rest of your life in a cell. A system that... Let me chime in real quick. I'm a laws of nature guy. I'm not a vegan. I'm a laws of nature guy. Um, I think part of the problem is, is mankind has to play try to play the role of what some people would call god what i would call mother nature um mankind has to say that we can do everything that mother nature can do it, it's really crazy how our thirst for power is it's not about knowledge and data. it's about um literal thirst for power literal thirst for power it really is it, it it's it's really it's just crazy i mean i don't even know how to really describe it of how mankind thinks they could do everything we would describe god does or everything mother nature does i mean it's like the climate change control nuts think we can actually control the climate Climate control. I mean, that shouldn't even be two words that come together. Climate control. It could be climate assist. Climate assist, you know, those two words should go together, but not climate control. This idea that you could just go to a air conditioned box and control the climate. You know, um, now mankind wants to control how... Um, like food is grown we already we want to bring back the woolly mammoth you know things that are extinct and it's one thing to bring back um you know like on the Jurassic park it, it, you know you had he was explaining you had an animal that died 
you know, dinosaurs died because supposedly because of asteroids and just Mother Nature, you know, wiped them out. But you had like some kind of um, birds that went extinct because of deforestation, because of something that man mankind caused. Now, yeah, I could understand if if mankind wiped it out. I, I might could understand a moral need, a moral need to try to bring that species back into the ecosystem. But if that animal died because of just natural mother nature causes or because of the ecosystem and it's extinct, why are we trying to bring it back? Why are we trying to bring back things that went extinct? Because they couldn't survive mother nature. Why would we assume they could survive Mother Nature now? Mankind just, we we just out here doing too much, trying to bring back woolly mammoths, trying to grow blueberries without a tree, apples without a tree, oranges without a tree, trying to think we could dictate the climate, you know, think we could control the climate. We just out here doing too many things that we really can't control. And I can only imagine how this is going to backfire, the man-made fruits. I can only imagine um, the issues that might come about this. Because I would think that part of a blueberry growing on a tree would be that it needs maybe some kind of nutrients or something from that tree, you know, to properly grow the blueberry correctly and, and give the blueberry all the things that uh, you know we get from the blueberry that are nutritious but i would think growing man-made blueberries is going to take out all the nutrition uh i don't see that's the thing i don't trust any of this i don't i don't know how much food i trust it nowadays period i don't eat no kind of um i refuse to eat like frozen um chicken nuggets i won't buy any frozen chicken nuggets like i I won't eat chicken if it's like actually breaded i won't eat no frozen chicken to me it's all processed you know i don't i don't trust none of it i don't trust the the plant-based meat i don't trust that it's made from plants wait i don't know what it's made from until i actually watch the process and i haven't really seen the process but this this blueberry thing, uh, gr- uh, growing oranges, blueberries, apples, mankind is just trying to do too, a little too fucking much. They're trying to play, like I said, what what people would call God, or play what I would call the roles of Mother Nature. It looks completely different from what we've always known. We're all aware that the world is changing yeah we are thanks to bill gates we're all aware that the world is changing bill gates actually gave money for these boogers okay but why is it changing because they're trying to force it to change you know it's like i heard joy Behart talk about it well you know that's it's getting so hot there's some places people can't live in the world no more what there's nowhere in the world that people can't live anymore because it's too hot and they're they're gonna die. They're, that people are just dying and, and it's just impossible to live there because it's just too hot. I can tell you what it is. It's it, it's impossible to live in certain places in the world because it's too fucking cold, like Antarctica. <laughs> How about that one? Um, yeah, these these people just be. They're trying to force the changes and they're trying to force these things too fast. They're not thinking about none of these things. They're not thinking about none of the cause and effect of none of these things. It's like trying to force electric cars in and gas cars, power cars out. I guarantee it's not going to work because they're not going to do it efficient enough. I guarantee they're not going to have enough like, um places for you to charge the batteries i mean you got to have at least you gonna have to have a shit ton of places to charge batteries they, 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 it takes what 20 30 minutes to charge these batteries 
people are going to get very impatient if you got, like, you figure a gas pump, you only got six pups. You think people are going to be waiting for 20, 30 minutes for six people to charge up their batteries? No. No, it's like these people come up with these ideas. They just pull them out their ass and just throw them out there, and they don't think about any of the repercussions, any of the cause and effect of growing blueberries unnaturally, growing orange, uh, oranges unnaturally. It's all about greed. It's all about greed. It's all about controlling a food source. And that's the thing, you know. I look at um, history when people always talk about how the Romans were such a great empire. Yeah, okay, Romans did some conquering because they they definitely had some advanced fighting techniques that were a lot better than everybody else, except Hannibal Barca, of course, <laughs> who they didn't put fuck with on the open ground. But also, I know that Romans barely could grow any fucking food. They didn't produce their own food. They had to get most of their food from Africa. And, you know, it, it's funny how you always got these narratives that, yeah, Roman Empire, they were superior. You know, anybody that, the person who provides the food for somebody who can't provide their own food, that's the person who's superior. So Africans were way more superior than the Romans because the Romans needed Africa for the food. Just like Egyptians uh, provided a lot of food, grains back in the days. Africans provided a lot of food sources for Romans who couldn't, didn't really have a lot of their own food sources. You know, it's, it's kind of like how I think about the Vikings all the time. People just think like the Vikings were these barbaric people just trying to conquer no, they were also looking for farming land, agricultural land, you know, resources, food, you know. So that's the thing. Like, if you control a food source and say the other food source gets limited or you can or you can purposely limit the other food source, which is kind of what's going on right now, if you think about it, you got Panama Canal. They got the drought in the Panama Canal where it was taking like um usually like what would take maybe a few days, like it would take like hours to get from one side of the ocean to the other is now taking like several days because of the lack of water, the the drought they're having, which is caused pro- more likely from the heat. Because, you know, Panama is further down south, which I lived in Panama before for a couple of years. Been to the Panama Canal. It's an amazing thing. Um, we used to go. I lived on Fort, Fort uh, Gullickson. And when we had to go to Fort Davidson, we had to go across the Panama Canal. Fort Gullickson was a Panamanian military base. And Fort Davidson was the American military base. But, um, yeah, so now it's taking like 21 days from what I've seen for some of these ships to get through the canal oh my gosh that that sounds like a perfect opportunity to have your monopoly on a food source when food is being held held up and how long a banana is going to last 21 days on a ship in the middle of an ocean and this haircut we've got climate change which is going to cause quite disruption to uh growing systems and where we live and how we grow and where we grow. And how much authority we give Bill Gates. Plant and food researchers working with cells from a range of fruits, including cherries, peaches and apples. Scientists say among the benefits could be reducing the environmental impact of food production. I think that we're... Before he go finishes, I hate to cut off again. Don't sit here and be fooled by this idea that they're doing this because of climate change. They're, they're doing this out the kindness of their hearts. That they're doing this to save hum, hum, humanity and save mankind. No, they're doing it for their own selfish interests, greeds, to fill their pockets, to have more control over us, more leverage, more power, to have us dependent. 
It's all about bracing down the wrong trajectory. Don't you? Instead of going, do you know what? Do you think we're creating food in a way that's detrimental? Are there any ways that we could improve that? Let's consult with a variety of agricultural experts from around the world and ensure that we don't put financial imperatives across our practical ecological consideration. Instead of having that conversation, it's like, oh, we could just grow stuff in a lab and carry on <laughs> racing towards the apocalypse. A profitable apocalypse. Growers have mixed views. Lab grown fruit seems to be making a solution to a problem we don't seem to have. Like, we have plenty of fruit to supply to the market. <laughs> There's no problem with that. Breaking unnecessary Frankenstein fruits. We don't actually need any more fruit. Snot covered blueberries. Well, I've just grown some out here. Get that filth away from me, you goddamn racist farmer lunatic. Agriculture in itself, while providing the miracle of incredible. Av- availability of food for former hunter-gatherers like you and me, also created interesting hierarchies that are becoming further emboldened with each new successive revolution. When technology and agriculture are combined, what you'll have is the ability to absolutely control food. And increasingly, I question the motives of the people that financially back these endeavours. We're always told this is going to help people, this is going to feed the poor, but you could find ways of feeding the poor. Now, it doesn't seem to be a bloody priority, does it? Let me know in the comments if you agree. Researchers say it's not about trying to replicate traditional fruit, but rather creating something new and equally appealing. (laughs) Well, of course. You know why? Because if you're not growing it on a tree, guess what? You can't really replicate it. It's going to be something new. It's going to be something different. And we don't know the cause or effects it's going to have. We don't know. Like this idea that you're actually replicating a blueberry by growing it in the lab. No, the way to replicate it is you got to grow it in the same process. And I don't know why... Like, my thing is, if they're trying to grow these things in labs, why couldn't it be something more like um, The Martian? Think of The Martian movie where, you know, he had to grow potatoes on Mars. So he had to create, he had to create moisture inside this room. He had to combine like oxygen, carbon dioxide. I don't know the whole chemical, you know, mixture, but he had to create moisture inside this room so he could grow potatoes. Why don't we just like, yeah, if you want to grow fruit in labs, why are we not still trying to grow it on the actual, like an actual plant, you know, like on the trees and whatnot? Why are you not just trying to control the inside? of the lab like the temperature and things of that nature why are we not doing that why are we just saying okay well we gotta grow it in labs so we gotta do it without a tree why can't we just still grow it in side of buildings make big buildings we can call them labs whatever call them whatever you want to just control the the climate in there mankind thinks they could control everything else control the climate in there where we could just grow more, you know, fruit and and things in a climate chain, a climate controlled building, you know, cause you're not, that's the thing. The only way you're going to control a climate is if you could, if it's in within a building, this idea you're going to control the climate with outside of the building is once again, is mankind just, you know, thinking they could fucking, uh, Accomplish every fucking thing that you could possibly imagine. And that's the problem with us. We think we could accomplish everything we could possibly imagine. You know, I don't see people floating in the fucking air with magic wands yet. So, no. Yeah, like, this shit is crazy to me. It's just crazy to me. It's not natural. It's greedy. It's all about control. It's all about power. It's all about us having dependence. Because I can tell you right now, if something happens, say, overnight, Bill Gates starts grow- all this lab growing food. And I'm not even going to finish this video because there's nothing more for me to see on this. This whole idea is just batshit crazy to me. Bill Gates starts his lab growing food. He's got a shit ton of his lab growing food. And... 
say, oh shit, we can't even get boats through the Panama Canal. Market is open for his lab grown bananas, lab grown oranges, apples, pears. You know, and that's the thing. I don't think, I wonder how much of this they're really even going to succeed at. And that's the, they have, I, they didn't show an actual blueberry grown. So this is still all like um, assumption. This is all still not reality. This is still, you know, make believe right now. It's still not reality it, it's like mankind you know we think okay yo we figured out artificial insemination so now we gotta artificially inseminate fruit next thing you know it's gonna be you know and i won't be surprised that they already are artificially inseminating more cows and things of that nature you know there's no telling this is just all about greed it's all about you know making more money in the market making more profit and the more profit they have the more control they have over us the more we depend on them the more control that we have over they have over us that's why i try to not depend on society as much as possible you know People always talk about why I still don't won't go get a car. Cause that's a very dependent kind of it's a very dependent tool. You know, and what happens when your car breaks down? People don't know how to react. They don't know how to react. They gotta they gotta scramble and call other people for rides, depend on other people, call a cab. Hop a bus. You got to depend on other things. Me, I just get up and go, man. You know, I just get up and go. I sleep in when I want to sleep in, even though I don't. You know, I, I try to depend on myself as much as possible. Because, you know, the more you're dependent on the man, the more they have control over you. The more they control your life, the more... um you know, they'll get what, what the, they'll get the results they want to get out of this lab grown food and fruit and things of that nature. You know, it's just crazy. It's just like, if mankind could think about it, they're going to try to accomplish it. Even if it's not even realistic, even without thinking about the effects, whether they're good or bad, you know, and I can only imagine the effects of lab grown um, blueberries. Cause I can only imagine that they're gonna have to do something very unnatural to make this happen. They're they're probably gonna have to add some they might have to add some kind of chemical or substance that doesn't naturally be in blueberries or pears or apples to cause a certain reaction. You know, and I'm just speculating here. I'm just speculating here. It just sounds like mankind needs to pump the brakes. We need to start thinking about the cause and effects of these things. What what could be the possibly worst thing that happens with lab grown food? You know, you gotta think about that. So um yeah, anybody who thinks Bill Gates is doing anything for humanity is really dumb in a bag of bricks. Anybody who thinks that inventing a new food source is solely about climate change is dumbing in a bag of bricks. That's like the very last reason. That's the very last on the list of why they're doing it. It's more about controlling a food source so they can control, making a shit ton of money off of that food source while they control it, 
And then it gets to like uh, possibly having a backup food source for their own needs, just in case things go wrong with the original organic source food sources. You know, they'll have easier access to their own food sources that they own. So it's all about really selfish personal needs. And, you know, I would argue probably not even on the list is help or save humanity during an apocalypse. If, you know, say, say it did get so hot that you just couldn't grow things no more. I think for North Carolina, that's all we're always gonna be able to grow tobacco because of that. And that's the thing, like potatoes growing like extreme heat, if I'm not mistaken. Like, do you need do you need like cool climate for potatoes and carrots and things of that nature? I don't know. They got they grow potatoes all the way down in like Peru and Bolivia, if I'm not mistaken, like very bottom of South America is growing potatoes, you know? So, and I could tell you right now, the Irish lived 400 years off of potatoes. My Irish ancestors lived 400 years off of potatoes. Yes, I got Irish in me. You can see it on my mustache when it fully grows out. You can see the red tint in my mustache when it fully grows out and whatnot. Um, yeah, I think the over perpetuating this, I think it's just all about control, all about greed. It's all about money. Um, you know, cause they, they, they fear monger and say the world's going to end in five years. If the world was going to end in five years and they knew it and they knew it, I could tell you right now, they wouldn't care about anything else going on in this world. They would be scrambling. They would be scrambling like the 2012 movie to get those arcs ready to go and things of that nature. And if they knew that, and if cats like, I honestly think like if cats like Elon Musk or somebody, there'll, there'll be at least one person that'd be super rich that would got the inside track to that and would have spilled the beans. Yeah, I don't think the world. I would this idea that the world's gonna end in five years is bogus. I would never think that. Um, mankind has lived through a lot. We have survived through an ice age. If we were around with dinosaurs were here, and dinosaurs were killed by asteroids and meteors and things of that nature, guess what? We survived it. They did, and you know, the humans are like cockroaches, man. We're like cockroaches. We will survive to the end of the time. We'll just go hide. We'll just go under the earth like Matrix. We'll just hide underground like the Matrix. You know, even if the robot apocalypse comes in, we'll, we'll, we will survive. We will survive. Once again, um, I want to thank y'all for tuning in. But, um, yeah, this, this lab-grown food thing is just mankind playing the role of what religious people will call God, of what laws of nature people like me would call you thinking you're Mother Nature. And mankind just trying to always accomplish and um, complete the feats of anything we could possibly imagine. Any Anything you've seen in a movie, mankind is trying to do it. Mankind is trying to do it. I just think they're going about it totally the wrong way. Why do you got to take away the plant part of it? Why do you got to take away the tree part of growing the lab growing fruit? Why can you not still grow it in labs, but control the climate like you want to control the, like you think you can control the climate, which you can if you're in, you know, inside of a building you got you could control it better do it that way but no we gotta we gotta reinvent the wheel we gotta reinvent the wheel every time it's crazy it's crazy um man and and a lot of crazy shit 
is going on at once right now. I've never seen so much cra- batshit crazy things going on at once in the public spectrum. Like, everybody could see all this crazy shit going on if they just open their eyes and look all at once. A lot of this shit was always, like, underground, super hidden, not really to the forefront. Now it's just super bat shit, crazy thoughts, ideas, views, actions, every single day across the board, you know? Man can become a woman. Woman can become a man. Lab-grown food. Suddenly, overnight, um, after two terms of voting for Barack Obama, I voted once. My mom voted once for the first time. All of a sudden, after two terms of voting him, America was became 50% of America became racist overnight. Um, it's just so much batshit crazy. The woke nonsense, the climate control nonsense. Now this shit, um, the censorship is, is like Luke fought for the censorship. We had the NWA censorship, uh, trying to censor Eminem. Now they're just trying to censor everybody across the board right now. And that's what pisses me off about Eminem siding with Democrats when he literally was tried, they, people tried to censor him and D- Democrats and liberals are king censorship right now. They have they weaponized censorship. Then there's the go- attack in the Second Amendment. There's the abortion nuts. There's a lot of batshit crazy shit going on all at once. A lot of radical, far left, far right, you know, radical views. Nobody wants to meet in the middle. Nobody wants to come to the gray area. Everything's all black and white. When technically, it's all about green. It's all about green. It's all about controlling every single last one of us. Black, white, Puerto Rican, Dominican, Asian, or Haitian. And shouts out to my Haitians that got it in the corner up here. At that, they, they stay at the, the house in the corner up here. Shouts out to my Haitians. Um... Yeah, man, it's that's the thing. Like they're out here making this all about black and white when it's all about green, which is all about control. It's all about total world domination. Like it's people think Democrats care about blacks, gays, transgenders, minor any minority. No, they care about global economy. World domination, you know. And I always, I always wondered, would they really start fully going through with the plan in my lifetime, or would it be when I'm gone? And it seems like in my lifetime, they're going to go forth with this plan. And a lot of people always talk about Mark of the Beast or Michael Chip and Ham. Well, guess what? If they go to global economy, digital currency, they ain't got to put a microchip in your, your your skin, even though they are putting microchips in people, you know, but they don't have to. That's the thing. I think they realize they're only going to be able to get so many people to conform to the microchip into the skin without purposely injecting it into them. And, you know, which is... I think why a lot of another reason why there was a lot of people skeptical about getting a vaccine is they were trying to quote unquote force people to get the vaccine, shame people into getting the vaccine, calling you a domestic terrorist if you didn't get the vaccine, a white supremacist if you didn't get the vaccine, an evil motherfucker if you didn't get the vaccine, an anti American and all this shit, all these labels that they would put on you if you didn't get the vaccine. You know, but digital currency, well, from what I heard, you'll have to have an app, which means they won't need to put a microchip in to track you. They'll just have an app that controls all your money and that will track you and it tracks. They'll be able to track. It's not like they they're already technically tracking 
your credit card tracks you, you know, my cell phone, I go into places that don't even have Wi-Fi internet in the building and they know that I've been in the building and my phone doesn't have an actual internet plan on it either. Cause you know, I'm not like everybody else. I don't keep my face in the phone when I leave my house. I don't keep my face in the phone when I'm at the house and I make money online every single day, you know, but I don't got attention span of a three-year-old. That's the thing. Everybody else apparently does. You'd be in line at a grocery store like this. Can't like people. It's like, no matter what people are doing now, if they can't just sit in one place without doing this. But yeah, this is all about control, man. Don't think this is all about, you know, grow food no more because it's getting too hot. That's at the very bottom of the fucking list. If it's even on the list, it's at the very fucking bottom. We're doing this so mankind can have another food source. We can save the world in the future for apocalypse. The only person they worried about saving is the motherfucking selves. If it is about a food source for the apocalypse, it's sure not about providing for me, you, or anybody else. Because because we're going to have to pay for it. And they'll just be over. Since they own the food source, they'll just eat free. They'll just give them, they'll just eat free. And we'll have to pay for it. And depend on them. If that if it did came about, if that actually came about where it was too hot to grow the food and we had to go to the Bill Gates monopoly owned lab grown food, I guarantee the price on that shit is gonna be sky high. That shit is gonna be way more expensive than regular food. Way more expensive. Especially if they own a monopoly, especially if, if there's a shortage of the organic food. And that's the thing, like, you can't even tell if any food's organic no more nowadays when you're trying to grow shit in a lab. You're trying to grow a blueberry in a, a, a freaking dish. This shit is it's just, it's just crazy thinking about this shit. It's really crazy. So thank you for tuning in to the Paul Pickett Podcast. Another batshit crazy idea and story that is definitely being overlooked from a lot of people. And I got a lot of friends. They're very cautious about what they eat and they put in their bodies. I'm not one of them. I mean, I eat bacon. I eat sausage. I eat ham. I eat pork. I'm not going to lie. I eat the pig. Uh, you know, because I eat things based off of flavor. And, and I do know that, yes, they're pumping steroids in these animals. And that's not healthy as well. Um, but this is even further than that. This goes even further than just pumping steroids in fruits. Pumping steroids in animals. Now you're trying to you know, invent a whole new fruit and try to act like you're replicating when you know you're not. When you know you're not. And we know the we know the um, effects of steroid pumped food. We know you can see it in these kids just coming out bigger than ever. The steroids in the food is making kids just bigger and things of that nature. We can see that. But, you know, my friend, you know, before I go, a friend of mine, shouts out to Bird, said, Mother Nature is really being disrespected right now. This day and age, Mother Nature is really being disrespected more than ever man can become a woman woman come man we could just grow our own food we could control the climate you know uh a baby's not a, a you know a, a, a fetus is not a baby until the mother to whenever the mother says so we can't even agree on when life becomes life you know when a life is a life 
it, it, it's it's just really mother nature has been totally ignored and being totally disrespected and she's gonna come back that's gonna come back to bite motherfuckers in the ass she mother nature is gonna come back with vengeance mark my words thank you for tuning in paul pinker podcast and i'm out